call for justice across the country as protesters took to the streets over the weekend. This following the release of a video showing five Memphis police officers beating 29-year-old Tyree Nichols to death during a traffic stop earlier this month. All five of the cops involved have been charged with second-degree murder and kidnapping. And joining us tonight to discuss is Julie Gunlock, program director for the Independent Women's Forum. Julie, great to have you with us as always. Um, you know, we always want to give police a benefit of a doubt, but in this case, it looks like there were some really bad actors involved, uh, with critics calling it more of a group beating than a lawful arrest. Your reaction to what happened in Memphis, such a tragedy. I feel absolute anguish for the family of Mr. Nichols who was killed in this incident. And I'm horrified um, that that video uh, is out there. I feel so bad for the family. Of course, it is an important video because it shows the extreme abuse and violence uh, that Mr. Nich Nichols suffered. And I feel so bad, of course, um, for Rovan Wells, Mr. Nichols' mother, who has shown such bravery um, and and really wants the truth about what came out um, out there and wants to figure out ways that we can prevent this from happening again. Yeah, it really is so heartbreaking. And as you mentioned, um, Tyree's mother, you know, she's really in the middle of it. And she said she's praying for the families of the officers and, and urging protesters to keep it peaceful. Uh, she also went on to tell MSNBC, NBC, quote, I believe in my heart that my son was on assignment from God. He finished his assignment and God took him back home. Julie, your thoughts on her words and what effect do you think it had on the protesters? Well, as a mother of three children, I can't imagine knowing that your child was beaten to death, but then knowing also that it is on film and that at the end of his life, he was calling out for her to to help him. That has got to be, and he was only about a hundred yards away from her house. It's an incredibly tragic situation, but I think it's really important that, that we try to get to the end, to the, to the reasons that this happened. And we really need to look at the police force in Memphis. And this is some of what she's calling for. Was there no screening of these police officers before they were hired? What sort of mental health evaluation or character evaluation did they go through before they were hired? They certainly uh, were not uh, good police officers. And it looks like, sadly, in Memphis, there is a culture of violence on the police force. And I, and I hate to say that because I, like you, want to give police officers the benefit of the doubt. But there is a sense that there is a culture of lawlessness, or should I say, actually, that police officers are above the law. Um, there's no reason for this. And what frustrates me the most is that we see a lot of commentators and people in the media twisting themselves into pretzels, trying to fit this incident into this white supremacy narrative or racist narrative. And that does no service uh, to Mr. Nichols or to his mother. There are other reasons that this happened, and we really need to investigate the real reasons and not, again, continue with this narrative of, of racism, which does doesn't fit in this case. Yeah, and all around, it really is just a horrific tragedy. Uh, in other news, uh, uh, New York City is also taking steps to combat perceived racism. Uh, they're forcing city employees to undergo critical race theory training. For those who aren't familiar with CRT, Julie, can you quickly give us a brief description and also tell us, I mean, how would this benefit city employees, if at all? Well, CRT, if you don't know what CRT is, that means you're probably a very normal person because CRT used to be relegated to higher education. Scholars would debate theories, um, critical theories, gender theory or race theory. Um, but sadly, those theories are now being deployed into our public schools, K through 12. These are very complex subjects that kids don't understand, and there's no reason they should have to debate these things. Um, it is a very divisive theory that pits race against race and actually labels people based on their skin color as either an oppressor or the oppressed. So if you are a minority, you're an oppressed class. If you're a white person, you are the oppressor. And really, there's no way to escape these labels. Um, and it, what's so horrible is the message that it sends, particularly to, to people of color, that they have no agency, they have no control over their lives, and sort of the deck is stacked against them. Um, it's also a deeply 
unpatriotic theory because it teaches people that the United States is hopelessly racist um, and will and will never improve. Um, anyone with a shred of common sense knows that race relations have improved in this country over the years, and we should celebrate that. Um, so CRT is very divisive. And as for New York City employees who are being asked to go through this training, it will not improve race relations. It will not do anything to alleviate racism. In fact, it will exacerbate it. And again, it is extremely damaging. It is a it is a theory of despair, um, and it hurts people of color the most. So I really hope New York City reconsiders that. And Julie, we're going to leave it right there. Thank you, as always, for coming on. We always appreciate your insights. Thanks for having me.